the problem is a global commons problem where everybody needs to be involved. Uh, the red comes in the context of mitigation uh, to climate change and deforestation and agricultural emissions, etc. They are a big part of the problem. And so we have to address that in addition to the energy emissions, which are the main source of emissions. And the important thing is the comparison of what is more efficient and effective to do, because every ton of carbon is equally important. So this requires a major effort by everyone. And there are some market mechanisms in addition to regulations that will have to be adopted in a combination of all of these to achieve some rational, rational um, and equitable, fair, uh, with lots of compromises for everyone. And the international financing will have to come uh, into the picture, uh, even if most of the actions and proposed measures are win-win-win, uh, as we call it, you know, good for the environment, good for poverty alleviation, good for growth, um, and good for abating uh, climate change, um, there will be a requirement for uh, financing. So for us to give enough incentives for agents to change behavior and for us to learn in the beginning, so there is some initial requirements for funding. Brazil uh, has a very rich experience, uh, as you know, economically, politically. Uh, the country is on the verge of a good growth, uh, pretty sustainable, relatively solid. Um, so it, it is uh, very encouraging and very uh, good to see Brazil and other countries on this path. Um, the situation, of course, is uh, uh, there are differences between Brazil and Indonesia. The overall problem is more or less the same. Uh, Brazil has one of the uniqueness of the Brazilian situation is the fact that uh, the area that we are talking about, the Amazon area, is mostly a frontier area, meaning there is very little government presence. So even if the government was very much committed to controlling deforestation, etc., which is increasingly so, it, would, it is still very difficult to, to actually achieve results on the ground because the government is not there. It's too big an area, uh, too many agents all over the place. Uh, in Indonesia, there is some frontier area as well, so they're they are comparable. And I think that the fundamental element in all of the uh, process uh, for both uh, national benefits to avoid deforestation and for the global benefits uh, for climate change is uh, uh, civil society involvement and participation. This is the key ingredient. Even, I think that the, this is the, the bottom line from Brazil is that it's been 30 years of a democratic regime. And I personally have lived this because I was raised during a hard military dictatorship, and it takes just too much time to learn how to make institutions democratic, how to make governments to hear different interests, private agents, civil society, NGOs, local communities, and it, it is difficult, uh, but the results is fantastic. But it's a slow, sustainable process. And so, uh, at least in the case of Brazil, certainly the civil society engagement is fundamental and, and the important thing also is that the governments, they may even be willing to change. They may be willing to control deforestation. They see the environmental benefits of this, not necessarily only the short-term goals of financial uh, returns from you know, deforestation, palm tree planting, etc. They may be even willing to do something about it, but they perhaps are not, uh, they don't feel enough pressure to act. And this is the crucial thing. Even with incentive, you need you know, a little push to do things. So in Brazil, this has worked increasingly uh, in that direction. And this is where I think you know, the lessons from Brazil could be heard here, that you know, engaging 
civil society, interest groups, NGOs, local agents, and the private sector, let's go to the table, let's sit down, let's discuss openly, and the government, you know, backing up. This is a good recipe for some s progress. Yes, and even the red itself has to be, it's going to be improved as it starts, you know, when money flows and countries commit. I'm sure there will be some discoveries. We're talking about 20, 30, 50 years in the, in the future. New technologies will come in. Um, there we hope. Um, there I don't know, and I cannot be too optimistic, but we are pretty it's reasonable to assume that there will, be, there will be some breakthrough in technologies or in some agricultural practice or in energy uh, sources, etc. That will probably help us on the way. So you, you have to be optimistic, uh, but for the time being, what we see is red. And that is a very interesting uh, and very serious and very laudable commitment by countries to do something which the world is claiming for a long time, irrespective of climate change. Uh, it is not easy, there are trade-offs, but I see uh, the world now moving inevitably to this green growth and much more environment conscious uh, path. And so I think that the red is obviously going to be a success. Um, countries will engage and the recommendation on a strategic level an economic strategic level is to engage as soon as you can. This is, the, I think, the main message.